I know when she re arrived here, uh, the local community kind of took her in along with other Tibetan refugees and helped find them work, and I was one of those places they found work. One of the things I like when I eat Diki's food is I feel like I'm tasting Tibet, and I am. It's the same exact thing that her parents made, her grandparents made, and that she's made, and that she is teaching other people how to make. I feel like I'm tasting her culture. They taste different when Diki makes them than when I make them. Same exact ingredients, but they taste different because they came the, from the hands of her culture. They came from the hands of Tibet. And I could never do that, right? So I can imitate it, but I could never bring that spirit to the table. I learned uh, a lot of, you know, uh, how to cut salmon, how to cut, you know, uh, how to make uh, crab cakes. All I learned from um, Tom Douglas. Right now, Dahlia is, uh, making um, salmon rub, salmon uh, spice. That was my recipe and uh, now they are making and everybody love it. First time I cooked for Dalai Lama in Tokyo in Japan and uh, uh, Tibetan exile government called me that uh, you are the only Tibetan chef so can you please if you have uh, time and can you please come with us in Tokyo then I said yes. I will. So I went to Tokyo and uh, I made uh, everything for Dalai Lama. Uh, it inspired me to respect my own cuisine and my own culture, my own culinary history in a way that I hadn't really thought much about before. You know, when I left home, I just left everything. I didn't make mom's meatloaf and I didn't make mom's spaghetti. I made my own. Uh, it inspired me to think about her meatloaf and her spaghetti in a different way. They came from the south side of Chicago and and that uh, her mom taught her how to make it and used the same cast iron pans when they were frying a steak and all the things that your own personal history brings to the table when you put out some of your own culture's food. And so I think working with Diki has helped me appreciate that more. I think those diversities that have become part of Seattle, uh, you know, it used to be we had Chinatown, right? Now we have Little Vietnam, and we've got Lao Town, and we've got Cambodia Town, and it's just very clear that those immigrant communities have enriched uh, the possibilities here in Seattle.